Julius. How about a chair next year? <laughs> no, no, I won't. I promise. <laughs> All right, Scotty Scheffler joins us this afternoon at the 105th PGA Championship. Scotty, welcome to Oak Hill. Uh, two wins already for you in 2023. How are you feeling about your game coming into this week? Feeling good. Um, I had a good prep week last week in uh, Dallas, and I felt like I played pretty solid. A few things that I want to clean up, but um, game feels in a good spot. Great. We'll uh, open it up for questions, starting on microphone seven, followed by five. Scotty, you and John have kind of put some distance between yourselves and the rest of the field, at least algorithmically, at least data-wise. Does what he's doing motivate you? Do you look at him, and, and is that, does that light a fire under you? I'm not really sure. Um, I, definitely, I definitely want to play well, and there's various things that can motivate me. I wouldn't say that John doesn't motivate me. I think anytime you see guys playing really good golf, you, you want to be doing the same thing. Um, and so whether... You know, it's Jason Day beating me last week kind of down the stretch or, you know, John just beating the crap out of me at a couple different tournaments this year. You know, it's it's always motivating when you don't do what you want to do, and that's usually trying to win the tournament. And so, yeah, I'd say a little bit for sure. And then last week you said there were a few things you wanted to clean up. What what are those things? Um, I didn't swing it as well as I would have liked to on the weekend, and then um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I feel like I was hit a lot of good putts last week, and so I feel like I'm going to – feel like my game's in a, in a really good spot. Scotty, you've talked about being able to live with whatever the result is, um, and you've certainly displayed that, but you haven't been outside the top 12 since last October. So doesn't that influence your expectations of yourself? I mean, not, not really. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a great stretch of golf. You know, I think the last time I really had a poor start, like you said, was, was in October, so that's good. Um, you know, when I show up to a tournament, I expect to, to do my best and try and play well. Um, most importantly, I just try and have a good attitude and go out there and, and play. Um, and so I don't, I, I try not to place too much of an uh, emphasis on the result. Um, for me, it's more about the preparation and showing up at the tournament and having a good attitude and then going out there and competing. Mike, Mike two. What did uh, what'd you pull out of last week uh, as far as you like playing the week before a major and just kind of rolling into it, you know, competition-wise? Yeah, so coming in with, with good momentum. Um, I took a good amount of time off in the three weeks that I had off, and so I was kind of coming into last week a touch rustier than I normally would be, and um, I, I played really good the first two days, and it was, it was odd for me to have struggled a little bit there on Saturday, but you know, I came back and played good on Sunday. Um, so I feel like my game's in a good spot. I, I My swing feels like it, like it normally does, which is good, and um, like I said, just hoping to clean up just a few little things here and there, and um, looking forward to, you know, trying to tackle this golf course this week. What's your impressions of this co course? It's, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> um, there's all, only two par fives, are both over 600 yards, and you know, we played yesterday, and I hit the fairway on four, and I had to hit like a 50-yard hook around the trees to get to the green with a three wood, and so um, that was kind of a telltale sign, especially after playing number three, which is a three iron to a green that. Looks like you can barely keep a seven iron on it. Um, so it's definitely a really hard course, but there's a few holes where there's some opportunities, and then there's a few few holes where you just kind of got to strap in and try and make pars. Let's go to microphone four, followed by mic one. Yeah, I was just curious if along those lines, does it remind you of any other tournament you've played so far, any other venue? Course not really. No, um, not really. Uh, it, to me, it just it's it's a really this one is just a really good major championship setup. I mean, the rough is very penal, um, the fairways are really firm, so they're hard to hit, and um, we should get I think a few different types of weather this week, and so it'll be the usual challenges: thick rough, deep bunkers. Um, just try and stay patient out there and play a few good rounds. And given tomorrow is going to be kind of nasty, have you adjusted your practice schedule at all as a result? Uh, not really. Usually Wednesday is a pretty light day for me anyways. Um, I'm, I'm used to kind of my, my schedule on tour where I go out early in the pro-am and finish early and go home and try and get some rest. So tomorrow I'll adjust to where it's I'll start a couple hours later than I normally would, and so I may get home a few hours later, but I'm still going to take it pretty light tomorrow. Scotty, we're, uh, we're like one year into this new era with Liv and the PGA Tour. And knowing what you know now, where do you see this heading? See what headed? future of professional golf 
I mean, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm focused on what I'm doing, and that's you know trying to have a good attitude and play good golf. And I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about too much of that stuff. For me, I'm, I'm just trying to show up here. And right now, I'm focused on PGA Championship and having a good week here. I mean, schedule changes, all those things do affect your, your golf. Yeah, schedule changes do. Um, it's exciting. I, I think it's, it's good that we're getting so many tournaments where I'm getting to play against the best players in the world. And um, the elevated events for us have been a ton of fun. And we've had some good battles and um, had a lot of great champions. And so it's been, it's been a fun stretch for, for us. Back to Mike One. Talked about a, a good attitude a couple of times. What does a, a good attitude look like for you, or how do you define a, a good attitude? I, I think approaching shots the right way. Um, I think early in my career, when I either missed cuts or didn't have good starts, usually when I missed cuts, it was only by a couple shots, and um, I would attribute a lot of that to kind of how I approach things mentally. And I've learned over time to stay more patient in tournaments. And you get to a golf course like this, and it's so challenging. And you know, you may make a few bogeys early and try and force things, and then you make a couple more bogeys. And um, mostly, it's just approaching shots the right way with the the right intensity. And so that's not um, like a frustration, but it's showing up on Thursday, treating it like it's Sunday afternoon, and being ready to go. And is that, I guess, how do you? Were you you were too intense, or you were not intense enough? I would say early in my career. I wasn't intense enough to start. I think I made too many mistakes early in the week and to where I was kind of on the outside looking in and I didn't have as many opportunities to win tournaments. And then on the flip side of that, once I made a few silly mistakes, then I would try and force it. And so it was kind of, you know, a little little snowball effect. And so I've, I've showed up to tournaments now being more prepared and, and more ready and, um, you know, more focused on what I'm trying to do. Doug? You guys have played against some really strong fields over the last two or three major-like fields, and you've played some, some really strong courses at times. I'm thinking Bay Hill that one year that it felt like a U.S. Open type thing. And that's, you played that's some, every year at Bay Hill. Well, okay. <laughs> um, and you played some, some major courses where scoring was, was pretty low. Um, how much when you get to something like this, and I'm trying to take your eyes completely off like Oak Hill for a minute, when you get to a major, is the recognition that it is a major get into your heads? Because you played some major-like tournaments play a lot more than you used to. Yeah, that's true. Um, I hadn't really thought about that very much. But I think any time you show up at a major, everything's a little bit different, whether it's like you get a new badge or little stuff like that. And for this one, it's a new golf course for me, which is strange, you know, with it being my fourth year on tour. And the majors always have a little bit of a different different spot in our heads. I mean, they're, they're the ones you always circle on your schedule. And it's, it's a you know, career-defining tournament and all that. And, um, in your head they, at all? Huh? Is it in your head at all, knowing that it's a career-defining week for you? Not really. No pressure or anything. I'm just asking. <laughs> yes. Hey, there's never any pressure at a golf tournament, right? Um, no. I, I think the, the majors, with all the history and everything that goes on here, there's always a little bit of a different feel. Um, and I think for me as a player, it's exciting. It's exciting to play a tournament that's so old and with all the history and all the great champions. And you know, it's a tournament that I always grew up watching. And so for me, showing up at the majors is always a lot of fun. You get any free stuff this week? Yardage book. Wow, that's it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone ten, please. Uh, Scotty obviously said it's really hard, challenging course. On top of that, with the wind, is there anything specifically that you're changing with your game uh, today, especially in the practice round that you're kind of going into Thursday with? I wouldn't say that I'm changing anything. Um, I just think the wind makes the golf course even more challenging, especially when you get crosswinds. When the fairways are so firm and you get a high wind like this, it's actually hard to hit the ball with enough curve um, to keep the ball straight without the wind taking it. And when the wind takes it, it starts curving, and then it lands on the fairway and it starts moving in another direction. So the fairways play even smaller with how firm they are. And so it just makes things more difficult. And a follow-up question with the pollen, and uh, a lot of players complain about allergies. Is that impacting you at all? I usually have bad allergies, but so far I'm doing all right. Um, so hopefully that continues as the week goes on. Microphone four. Have you spent much time in western New York before, and are there any experiences you're kind of looking to check off your bucket list in the next couple days? I've only been here once. Um, I played the Monroe Invitational. I, uh, I had a, my roommate in college, Gavin Hall, was from here, and so we came up, stayed at his house, and it was the only tournament that I've recall withdrawing from. 
Um, so I only played one round. It was a quick trip up here, and so hopefully this this tournament lasts a little bit longer than one round for me. Why'd you withdraw? Um, I woke up with a cr big crick in my neck, and it was really cold here. And I played the first round, and I'm I'm never one to withdraw. I'll, I'll limp in. I I, I, I want to finish and I want to compete. Um, but my dad ended up he he was here and he ended up calling my coach and Randy called me on the phone and was like, Yeah, you really need to just be mature here and, and come home. Um, it was like 50 degrees and when was 120 and at the U.S. Open the next week and um, you know I listened to Randy. I feel like a lot of the time it would work the other way around where the dad or the coach would say, no, you got to finish. But have you always just been a guy that you have no interest in WDing from anything? I mean, it's it's the only tournament that I've rem remember withdrawing from. Um, I've, I don't think I've ever done that. Maybe someone on the internet can find if I have before. Um, but <laughs> that's the only one that I recall. All right, back to Dan. I know for major weeks it's probably very routine, but on normal weeks on tour, do you, do you go out and do things during a tournament? I usually go out to dinner. Um, at majors, I, I, don't, I don't treat any tournaments different than any other ones when it comes to my like weekly preparation. Or anything like that? Do what? You know, like travel with more people or stay with people for majors that you don't normally? Um, no. So that would be that would be something that I would really try to avoid is having the majors feel even more different than they already are. Um, I remember when I played, I learned this at a young age. I played the Nelson when I was in high school, and my parents actually got some advice that they wanted. Um, I think it was from Randy or Rocky or somebody, but they told them my parents to keep everything as normal as possible. Don't make it feel any different. And so. We didn't have anybody staying at the house. It was just us. It was just like a normal week. And so when it comes to major championships, it would be something that I want to keep as normal as possible. So, you know, we're staying with the same people we usually stay with and keeping things as regular as possible. And whether that's going out to dinner or anything like that, it's, you know, just a normal week. Jeff? Scotty, your, your great consistency this year, I'm sure there's a, a lot of uh, elements that lead into that. But year over year, is there any part of your game you look at or anything in your game that – is just uh, significantly better than a year ago? Or? Um, not really sure. I, I'm always trying to kind of improve across the board and address weaknesses, and um, that's something that I'm constantly working on. And so it's nice to see that it's paying off and having a lot of good results. I think that's something you, you've you always seen from the best players out here is they're showing up often on leaderboards. And so I'm proud that I've been able to do that for the last you know few months and hoping, hoping to continue that going forward. We'll wrap it up by going back to Mike Ken. Oh. Uh, so you said this was a new course for you. Any hole that you're struggling with? No, I've only played each of them, each of them once. Uh, I'm sure I'll struggle on a hole here towards the end of the week, but um, you know, no trends so far. Follow up: Is there any hole that you really enjoy playing that you feel like you're doing really well? I, I think I think what's good about the golf course is there's a lot of opportunity, um, and so. What I mean by that is when you hit good shots, you get rewarded. And so when you drive it well on the fairway, the fairways are firm and the ball's going to run out. And so you should have, even if the hole's you know, 500 yards, you should have, as long as you're not playing into the wind, somewhat of a scoreable club, whether it's a 7-iron or 8-iron coming into the green. And so you get rewarded for hitting good shots. And if I miss the fairway on one of those holes that's 500 yards, I'm going to be hacking something out of the rough and probably not going to be able to get to the green in two. And so I think it'll be a good golf course where it'll separate good golf from bad golf. Doug is actually going to wrap it up for us. Yeah, one one live question for you. I, I, I had a sense there was great curiosity amongst public press, even some players, about how this was going to work when when live players and tour players got together at Augusta. Is there any sense that having Augusta go the way it did that it's it's um, it, it's kind of normalized now, or did it feel normal to you at Augusta? I think it felt normal for me at Augusta. Um, Were you at all curious going into Augusta, whether it was really. tea times or? Not really. You get curious about anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm a curious guy. <laughs> Great. Thanks for the time, Scotty. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it.